and this is Triana on Violet's shield. That's a uh, hideous Triana. Wow. It's not even skilled up. No, what? You've got to be kidding me. You skilled this up? Why did you skill up a sonnet? Oh my god. Hey guys, this is Juno and welcome back to another Summoner's War video. If you are an F3 player, I hope you guys watch this because this is another account improvement and it's another F3 account. And it's a true F3 account because when you look at this record, his best score was obviously F3. When I first look at this, you guys have to question yourselves, what is my defense rate and how it's doing? If you really want to get out of F3 easily, like you can run through it if you have a great offense. Like if you have Tiana, if you have Leo, and if you hit the right defenses, I am pretty sure that you could get out of F3. However, it's going to get harder and harder if you do not draft a good defense or a defense that makes sense. So when I say it makes sense, I think a defense tends to do one thing. Uh, for most of it, at least in early to mid game, it either has to be super tanky all around or it has to be super fast all around. And this kind of changes once you get better units, once you get better runes as you climb up the ranks. Because as, as you go up, you'll see like LD Nat 5s going into that. Even LD Nat 4s that could bring in a variety of defenses in where you could allow your defense to be fast. Well, a part of it be fast, like having a Samantha Clara, but the other two being like tanky units that do damage. However, in the early game, in the mid game, I have to say that's a little difficult. If you want to see more success is the right word. I think that you should learn and try to build teams that has a one-sided color in this level so when i look at this team right now obviously when i see fast i see oliver and cocky right because cocky obviously is a good damage dealer for a fast team he is not really good for a tanky team because his body is relatively squishy due to the fact you have to stack so much attack on this unit and you sometimes want to definitely stack speed so Definitely fast, and Oliver, no question, he has a 33 lead. There's no reason for you to put an Oliver if you're not going to go fast. And in this team, it even doesn't make sense because you don't have a stripper, an AoE stripper, and the only stripper that you have is skill 1 on Molly. Obviously, the latter two units that you see here with the with the Molly and Wusa are tanky units. So they fit more of the tanky team, and I will say Wusa in general is just not good in a tanky team since he doesn't really bring in... I guess you have to say a good passive for a defense. So I'm going to be switching this up. I know that he has the units to be tanky and I, and I looked at his rune quality. It didn't look that great to be fast since I am going to be making a Tiana offense. I did get to see the swift rune set and to be honest, it is nowhere near C3 level even or C2 level. So I decided to go with a tanky defense instead. The defense that we're going to be running on this team it's gonna be with a carnal, no brainer. If you have a carnal, I have made a I made a video on it a long time ago, a way back. And if you have this unit, there's no reason for you to not put this unit as your lead. If I can find him, there you go. Hope he's skilled up. Well, most of it. We'll still use him. He has a great lead. Like I I swear to God, his lead is just too good to ignore. And then from here on, you're gonna be adding. Well, see, he has a Veronica. But what's the point of Veronica not being fast? And his swift runes, his fastest Tiano is 270, guys. There's no way we're going to be making a fast team, a fast defense. Uh, instead, we'll be putting the Triana in here. We'll also be putting the Molly and then a Juno. He also has Audrey, which is not that great, to be honest, right now. She definitely needs to get a buff for her to be useful. He can go with Abelio if he wants to. But Abelio is not fully skilled up. I think he needs to be fully skilled up for this. It's a little different with Carnal because Carnal is mostly there for the lead. You can't go wrong with the 44 lead. And yes, some people might say you can't go wrong with Abelio's skill 3, right? You get the, you get the heal. So we're going to put Juno here. Let's, let's take a quick other look to see if there's anything better. I was debating if I should put a Ariel here since Ariel was skilled up. And I do love the Ariel. I'm using Ariel in my defense and it's working really, really well. I've gotten great defense rate the past week and I have to admit it's getting harder and harder for me to reach G3 but I want to at least consistently get G2. Yes, it is still a little hard for me when it is during the inter-server battles because people that are not interested for some reason start going ham on that week as well. <laughs> but uh, at least for the other weeks, G2 I want to be consistent with 
And after changing my Abelio to an Aerial, for some reason, the Aerial is doing better. I don't know what, but the resistance, just up to, maybe just by the fact that we have to give Aerial the 100 res and giving it double Nem, it has a greater chance for it to maybe steal a turn since it does not have a condition like Abelio where you have to make a unit below 40% HP. And I'm kind of debating right now if I should go with an Aerial, but in this case, really we're relying on just the Cardinal to do all the work and we're really just blocking Cleaves. That's all we're doing during Rush. Is that good enough? Debatable. Because in the midweek, people tend to take it slow, they don't have to rush, so they will come in with you know slow teams just for the guaranteed win. And in that case, these teams will be free food because why wouldn't they bring a heal on their side, immunity on their side to just win against this pretty easily, right? So that's why I want to add that Juno here during the week, at least. I had the Juno, come on. During the week, oh my goodness, wait, Juno's not skilled up for uh, I mean, does he have Praha? Praha could be a one, oh man. Okay, never mind. We will go with the we will go with the aerial just because that. Well, how about Rakan? Should we go with Rakan? Rakan has a strip too. Okay, we'll go with Rakan. Go with Rakan. Okay, we'll do that. We'll go with Rakan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll go with Rakan. Uh, but I will change it to the aerial in the in the in the rush week because in that week people tend to want to cleave. They don't like it taking it slow, um, and there's a good chance people will skip the defense um, just so that they don't waste time. So we'll go with this defense. So let's set that. All of these currently have runes. Maybe I should show it to you guys so we know how we're going to switch it up. But this is how Kornu looks like on Violent Will. This is how Molly looks like on Violent Nemesis. And this is Triana on Violent Shield. That's a uh, hideous Triana. Wow. It's not even skilled up. No, what? You've got to be kidding me. You skilled this up? Why did you skill up a sonnet? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, man, I'm getting destroyed here. I'll still put up the Triana. Triana is mostly there for that one t one um, death prevention. I'm pretty sure if I put this up, he'll start working on it. So let's just put that. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Uh, and then finally the Rakan is on Vampire Revenge. Now the offense that we were making, he was using this, a fast offense, which I'm okay with. But to be honest, I don't think this will have enough damage later on. Yes, uh, you'll also not be able to outspeed later on since your Triana, so since your Tiana is so slow. I just decided to go with the conventional team. It makes no sense to not use this team. Oh, he has the Praha. Oh, that's that's kind of kind of use that. Which is the Zeros Tiana Galleon Punk Bank. There's just no reason for me not to use this. It's just one of the safest team out there. Easy clears, especially when you're in in a lower level. So my God, I mean, I think he said it's okay for me to use Devil Mons if he does have Devil Mons. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, if he wants to, I'll actually rune up the cocky as well, right? Because the cocky is at least almost fully skilled up. Just in case the Pungbek is not usable in the beginning. First start with the Tiana, because we have to know how fast the Tiana can be to be able to speed tune this team. And before we do that, it's really important to check the, the tower level of speed. Wow, this is really, really bad. Because that kind of destroys the the speed order that I found. But we'll still go with it. Let's go with Tiana first. Let's go make the change for this unit right here. A few moments later. So I am done with the AO. And you guys will see that there's gonna be a lot of runes that are not powered up. We only have like six mil mana left, but I do want to power up all the runes of the defense. I think the 135s really are important for the defense. So for now I will just put every mana into that defense and then the owner could work on his offense runes i am pretty sure most of the artifacts and the 135s will not be powered up on the offense but i'm hoping that i could power up all the defense runes but if you look at this team the tornado is uh the tiana in this speed and then the galleon in this speed on 129 speed 
with 83 accuracy, but this is coming with uh, skill 3 accuracy, 10%, so that's 93. As you can see, there are some runes that are not fully powered up, and this is because we are assuming they're going to be going first. Now, it is important that you do finish powering up all these runes because there's no guarantee that you will defeat the defense in one swipe. You might need to go again, and in that case, you definitely don't want to die once the opponent moves. So you, you actually do want to power up all these runes and artifacts to get the most takenness out of these units. And then it's the Zeros that going on Despair Blade on 73 accuracy, but with this artifact giving 11% more on skill 3, that's 84%, which is actually not that bad. We are missing some damage because it's not fully skilled up either on 225 speed. And then finally, the Punk Bag that's not skilled up, that's going on Fatal Blade. So I think the Punk Bag will work for now in this level. I do think he should skill it up. Uh, and if he really wants to use a different damage dealer, then he should run up a Cocky a cocky around the same speed it should be easier and you have to keep in mind that cocky has a higher base speed so it'll be much easier to get the speed on uh fight fight energy fight guards in some kind of set that gives him the most attack and see how that does for the time being if he doesn't want to use punk bag but i do think this punk bag is okay for now it does like 30k damage 40k damage depending on the unit and we'll be testing out this defense because the defense rune has not changed yet uh, we want to see how easy is it, how easy it is for us to clear this and then how much more difficult it gets after we change the runes. It might not be um, a win from the defense, but it might be harder, right? Um, what is there? Okay, I did want to show you guys if you guys do use the speed tuner, how you speed tune this. In the summons world optimizer, you can see that I'm in the speed tune tab and you can see I've laid out the four units that I am using. And currently in game, we are not using a speed lead. The speed tower is level 8. I showed you guys that at the beginning. I thought it was going to be level 15, but no, he didn't fully scale it up or power it up. So it's currently level 8, so you have to you have to make sure that you put that level there. Uh, when it's level 15, you'll see my initial build that I found. You'll see that this is going to go away. Because with the 15%, because of the horrendous space speed that Xeros has, Galleon is going to take in more of that speed. And I should be one speed faster than the Xeros and it will move in front of the Xeros. And you can see right here combat speed. That's what you're that's what that's what you want to look at. Combat speed is 241, whereas Xeros is 240. So one speed slower, meaning the Xeros will move next. Now it can be slower because you can see in the bottom there's a speed minimum, right? There's a speed minimum meaning that it could be this slow and it'll still take the next turn because there's a boost that's coming in from Tiana. So with the 30% boost on a 271 Tiana, the Galleon can be 218 speed, the Xeros could be 218 speed, and the Punk Bag can be 216 speed. However, when I was finding the builds, it looked like it was optimal, and um, the builds that I liked were a little faster for Galleon. You can see it was 224 that I initially found, and for Xeros it was 225. But, be but I was surprised because his speed tower wasn't powered up, so when I changed this to 8, you can see that now these two are on the same speed level, and it means depending on the slot, another unit will might, might move first. And in this case, it was the Xeros, because Xeros is lead, meaning he's the first slot. So I did have to make the Galleon a little faster. I found a different build that was around 230 speed, right? Uh, I think that shows right here. I think that shows you guys right here on the Galleon. Galleon's at 229 speed. So when I put that 229 there, you can see now combat speed is 238, which is five speed faster than the Xeros. So definitely Galleon is now moving next, Xeros will then move, and then finally the Punk Bag with the combat, combat speed of 25 will move. And just remember that the speed minimum is what's important. Oh shoot, I, I forgot. The speed minimum for Punk Bag also changed. Because the tower is so slow, the Tiana is not getting advantage of that attack bar boost. So actually right now, I just noticed that we have to change the Punk Bag. The punk back is not tuned on on 216 speed so that's why it's really important to look into your optimizer to make sure everything is tuned as you've seen right now i just found a mistake because that speed towers was level eight now my punk back needs to be faster it can't be 216 speed when you saw when the speed tower was level 15 you see that speed minimum is 216 but now we know that his speed tower is level eight we actually have to be faster and thankfully my xeros initially it was already fast enough on 225 speed we just have to make the change to our punk bag 
which we're going to do. So let me find another build. I am a little sad on this because I thought we were done. Thankfully, we found a couple builds, 301 builds, but obviously not hitting as hard. Well, actually, we're hitting hard. Hmm, interesting. But here it goes. There's one build right here that we can follow. So let me equip that, lock that, then go in here and find the different grinds. Sorry, find the different runes that we'll be using. So it looks like we'll be taking a June rune right here. We do have to plus 16 this. There's no way because he's a damage dealer. We do want the max damage, right? Looks like we're taking a rune from Sabrina right here. Another June rune right there. And then we already took that rune, right? We took that rune. I believe we took this rune as well. And then we took this rune. So with that, we got seven more speed, 223. Yes, we are losing a lot of crit damage, but we have no other choice. We have to go with it because we do want to stay in tuned. So with that, that's the punk bag. Again, I'm not I'm only gonna power up this because that's giving us more attack. I'm not gonna care about this right here. That's giving us more defense and we'll just get right in i believe there isn't much more that we could grind maybe we could find the gem here that will give him more crit damage so let's actually stop this here and then see if there's more no no yeah he is really lacking in grinds as well definitely needs to work on his bgr5 but with that we can now actually test the defense on this defense that we currently have again like i said there is no change on the runes for the defense so let's see how easy it is for us to clear it molly's not as strong maybe it's a good idea to switch out the molly but we are giving it 100 rest just bear that in mind because i think that's the one saving grace for molly now so we get the reset on the triana it's on the revenge sets with counters we're gonna go on the molly because now we can't glance on the molly so that's an easy 31k almost clean up carnal trying to save the defense but that's not gonna work and we easily win against that so that was the offense guys again keep in mind in this level i think it is more important that you are in tuned it's gonna get much much more important as you climb as you get into the higher ranks if you don't keep the details starting starting this level it's going to be really, really hard to pick up. Well, not really hard, but it will be a hassle to pick up and to, to start learning then. Okay, now let's go to the defense and change those runes. Okay, I am done with the defense, but I decided to knock with the Rakan because we couldn't get a good build. And we, I decided to go with the Praha. The thing is, the Praha stopped after we used up all the mana. So we just have to work like this and he'll have to actually rune won't power all of these up and it'll still be pretty squishy so i just hope that it works in this level for now but it is definitely not the best it was hard because we have to get 100 reds and this is not fully powered up hoping that we get some tanky stat down here and then we could probably take out the crit damage for hp percent here let's look at the grinds on all of these yeah the low grinds are low I'm looking so that this is going to be a little better in the end. Like this could be an HP percent too. Yeah, so there's room for improvement for sure. Uh, but this is the Triana. Oh man, the Triana could not, did not get powered up either. So we actually lost all of our mana before things were done. So it's kind of sad. I think Molly's in a good state at least except the slot one and the uh, artifacts are done. And then finally the Carnal also looks good. Oh, well, almost. With the artifacts that look like this. Um, let's test it and see how it goes. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be able to win against our offense, sadly. Who knows? Maybe it will actually get resisted. Oh, uh, well, full defense break there. No, it just got destroyed. Oh, shoot. It did resist. It resisted. <laughs> it resisted. That's good. That's good. But can it survive? That's the question. I don't think it could survive still, right? Uh, I think if we kill the Karno, it's over. Yeah, we could bring the heal, but I think we'll. He doesn't have enough damage to do anything. But just by doing this, it's stalling time, which is extremely important in a rush. 
So yeah, this offense will win. It just means it's a better offense than the defense. And also you have to you have to put in the fact that we did not get all the power ups or the you know fully maxing those runes. So uh, once those go in, maybe it'll do a little better. But at least for now, it looks like they yeah, at least stalled it a little compared to the previous defense. It definitely did, right? Like this is taking another turn. Yeah. So let's try this again and take a quicker look or a closer look at the resistance coming in from the Triana and see if we can clear it quicker. Okay, it's still got the full defense break. Look at Triana. This time we got it. Yeah, we did get it on her. So if we go again, this time it'll go through. 32k. Oh, Carlos still survived. That's great. But we win there. Let's try one more time. Because we put a lot of damage reduction from um, wind on all of these units. Because I do believe Pungbek is a easy clear to this. Also with like uh, Leah's. Sadly, we can't block those. Still again, increased everything. But this time the Praha survives. So if, if the Praha gets a lucky resistance there, she'll be able to heal. Everybody will sleep. And then Karno could actually wreak some havoc if he has a chance. Let's try one more time. Yeah, our defense break is pretty clean. This time the Molly resisted. But it would it wouldn't matter, right? Because we still go for the Molly. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's easy to clear, sadly, but I do believe he'll do much better than the defense that I was doing that he was using before. I do believe that he should power up all the runes for this. Let's take a look at the towers once more, and we'll know that there's a lot of stuff lacking. Damage is lacking, his tankiness is lacking, um, so he has a long way to go. He has a long way to go. Let's test this offense that we created in some of the defenses that we find here. We're not going to outspeed that. Nor that we could outspeed this though. It's gonna be kind of hard because this girl also brings in glancing. Let's try it again. Our punk bag does not hit as hard because it's not scaled up, and that was a fast little pony right there. But even if she changed, we would have cleansed it. Now, hope this girl's not on Nemesis or Revenge, or even if she she's on Nemesis, does she? Yeah, she doesn't cut. That's why it's so important for you to have a tuned team. I do want to go on this girl, but she's kind of kind of healthy. And I know that our Pungbae can't hit so hard, so we'll go for the Gurkha. We do crit, 41k. We clean up most of those teams, most of the units, and then we get the win. Now, we have to reset a lot of units here. Or we have to keep a close eye on who we don't reset, so we kill that unit. I think the best thing to... Oh man, we're just coming in, so let's check. Increase. That's a resist from Ariel, so we have to kill the Ariel right here. 32k. They all survived, that's not good. Procs. But this should do a big damage. Reason why I put her on a crit damage build. And we get the wind as well. Right? But this is another tanky one, it should be easy. Unless that you know super fast. Nemesis, revenge, and he gets lucky. Looks really slow though. Okay, Juno resisted, which is fine. And we'll go on the Ratesh, since we know Varad has high defense. Yeah, easy cleanup. This one, I, I want to believe that the Gion is going to be way faster than us. Should we check? <laughs> it's going to be faster than us, look. But we have no will on Tiana. That's fine. Oh, Gianna's not faster, holy cow. Even if she was faster, like I said, our Tiana's not on will, so we could just cleanse everything, all the stuns and all that. So it would have been a still win. Okay, cool one there. So that was it guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this explained to low level players on what they need to focus on and how they should be building teams and especially in offense, how important tuning is. Tuning is really important, hope you get the hang of it early on. The, the optimizer is a great tool that can help you do that. And again, it's all about that combat speed on the top. Uh, if you're, you could also use it for RTA. There's a check mark right next to it showing um, use for RTA because RTA takes are a little different. Um, and also remember to put your uh, tower level. We thought it was gonna be 15 and it was not, it was eight, which drastically changed the outcome of the speed that we needed. And you saw in the middle that we did have to change the speed of all that. 
So that was it guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys watched till now, please like and subscribe. Also, if you guys enjoy my work, you want to see more of my content, please join my Patreon. I do offer account reviews to all my patrons. And if you guys want to see account reviews, please um yeah, search my YouTube. There's other account reviews for various level of players and maybe who and who knows, maybe your account is close to theirs. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.